With every generation of new consoles comes great excitement for new hardware, new games, and new services. But overall, I think this generation of consoles has had a ton of great games. It's just mind-blowing how many good games we have gotten on a regular basis, so we're going to take a look back at the top 25 best Xbox One games. What's cool about this though, is that these games will also be available on the Xbox Series X thanks to backwards compatibility, but it certainly was no easy task narrowing this list to just 25 games. So with that in mind, your list may be different than mine, and if I didn't mention one of your favorites, let me know in the comments below. With that said, let's get right into the list. At number 25, I have Sunset Overdrive, which is an often overlooked game this generation, and it really shouldn't be. At one point in time, Xbox and Insomniac Games, which is now owned by PlayStation, teamed up to make an insanely fun game with Sunset Overdrive. It's probably one of the most fun open world games I've played because it basically puts you in a huge playground to wreak havoc on zombie-like creatures with crazy weapons and gadgets. It also has fun platforming where you can bounce off trees, grind on rails and power lines, and if you're just looking for a fun game, then Sunset Overdrive is an easy choice. When the Xbox One first released, one of the big exclusives was Titanfall. It was a very fast paced first person shooter where you can run across walls and jump into big mechs with high mobility. The competitive multiplayer was just fun and addictive, but with Titanfall 2, they took that formula and made it even better. What was surprising though, is that Titanfall 2 also has a compelling single player campaign, which is why it makes this list. Titanfall 2 is the full package, whether you like multiplayer or single player games. Crash Bandicoot unfortunately took a very long break, but finally with the Crash Insane Trilogy, he has finally returned in a major way. The Crash Insane Trilogy is a game that shows you how to do a remake right. This is all three of the original Crash games remade, and just like the 90s, these games are still very fun. They're also very unique with their 3D platforming, and they're not like any other platformer on the market. I think that's actually one of the reasons people love these games so much, and oh yeah, they're very difficult, so don't let the cartooning graphics fool you here. One thing is for sure though, there is a reason fans have held Crash in such high regards for so long, and it clearly shows why in this trilogy. They are great games. Sea of Thieves may have been criticized at launch for a lack of content, but interestingly enough, I think Sea of Thieves ultimately became one of the best games of this entire generation. Sea of Thieves is a very unique game, and there is nothing quite like it, especially those naval battles which can be an absolute rush. That was always the case though, but Rare has continuously added more and more content, and now there is just so much to do in this game. So whether you just want to explore the beautiful world of Sea of Thieves and its gorgeous looking ocean, or if you want to battle it out with other pirates, catch some fish, or even take on story related quests, there is a ton to do here. Rocket League has definitely become one of the most surprising games of this generation. I would have never expected this game to be as successful as it is, but once you play it, you completely understand why fans enjoy this game so much. On the surface, it's a simple game where you push a ball into a goal, but there is so much more to it than that, and it actually has a very high skill ceiling. I always say this, and I stand behind this statement, but I truly do believe that Rocket League is the best sports game of this generation. Hellblade is an, an amazing game for more than one reason. The story is phenomenal, and the actress Melina Jorgens did an excellent job with both the voice acting as well as the facial animations, which are just incredible. The thing that really surprised me though was that Hellblade is not a big AAA game, but rather this game was made by a small team of around 20 developers. If anything, Hellblade is the perfect example on why you should be so excited to see what Ninja Theory can do under Xbox Game Studios next generation. Yakuza finally made its way to Xbox, and I can't stress this enough. Xbox fans really need to be paying attention to this franchise, especially if you like story driven games. Yakuza 0 is the perfect starting point with a story that has you on the edge of your seat with several twists and turns along the way. It does only have English subtitles, but you should be able to quickly get used to this. 
It's not just its story that's good though, because the atmosphere in Yakuza is pretty incredible and really makes you feel like you're in Japan. It does play like an RPG beat em up style game, and it can be a little goofy at times, but the story is very serious, and I can't recommend this game enough. Final Fantasy XV can often be divisive among Final Fantasy fans, but I do think that this is a great entry to the franchise. Final Fantasy XV has a beautiful world, characters that has great chemistry, a fun action-based combat system, and a good story as well. It did improve a lot with the Royal Edition and expanded on the original story. I actually think the team did a very good job with this game, and whether you like the old Final Fantasy games or you're new to the series, I think you should definitely check this one out. When Rise of the Tomb Raider first got announced as a timed Xbox exclusive, there was a lot of controversy surrounding this game. Funny enough, Xbox is no longer the ones aggressively searching for big timed exclusives like this, but Rise of the Tomb Raider is a great game. I personally love the Tomb Raider reboots, and Rise of the Tomb Raider is arguably the best of all three. The gameplay is a lot of fun, where it mixes in a lot of different elements, whether that be its third person shooting, platforming, puzzles, or cinematic set pieces, but it's just always fun to play, and the story is also very well made. If you like these cinematic games, do yourself a favor and play all three of the Tomb Raider games. Obsidian Entertainment has always been viewed as one of the best RPG developers in the entire industry, and it really shows with the Outer Worlds. They basically took what they did with Fallout New Vegas and ran with it in the Outer Worlds. In fact, I would say the Outer Worlds kind of plays like a mix of both Fallout and Mass Effect, which are both great games in their own right. The Outer Worlds has a ton of charm poking fun at corporate culture, it's very well written, and has fun companions. Now you can swap this game with Fallout 4 if you want, since both are so similar, so do keep that in mind, but either way, both of these are great games. Monster Hunter World has been one of the most successful games this generation, selling more than 16 million copies. That's very interesting because Monster Hunter has always been very successful in Japan, but for the first time ever, it exploded throughout the rest of the world. It certainly benefited from taking that leap into the home console market, and I can't imagine it any other way. The world itself is so well realized in this game, and it's not just fun to hunt and explore, but the habitat has its own unique personality, which makes it feel very lifelike. There is also a cooperative component where you can hunt these monsters with your friends. And that's the thing, Monster Hunter World is very addictive as you try to hunt for new items and gear. You can easily lose hundreds of hours to Monster Hunter World. I've always been a big fan of Remedy Entertainment, and over the years they've made some pretty great Xbox games, including Alan Wake and Quantum Break but Control may be their best game yet. Control was probably not the most popular game on this list, but the quality and creativity is certainly there. This is a stunning game to watch in motion as the building morphs and changes, and even though it's a big AAA third person shooter, it actually plays out like a Metroidvania style game. You do get plenty of abilities to make you feel like a superhuman, and it feels great to play. With that said, I do recommend playing this one on the Xbox One X as it does struggle on the original Xbox One and the S model. In my opinion, the best 2D fighting game of this entire generation is Killer Instinct. Killer Instinct certainly had an interesting development cycle as it only launched with 6 characters and switched developers after Season 1, but ultimately I don't know if I've ever played a fighting game as fun as Killer Instinct. The combo system is fast and fluid, each character is unique and crazy, and then you have the combo breakers, which is a really unique mechanic for fighting games. This actually makes you think about how you approach each opponent, as you're not just trying to do super long combos, but you're also playing this constant mind game. If anything, Killer Instinct is probably my favorite fighting game of all time. And yeah, let's bring back KI for the Xbox Series X. Rainbow Six Siege is yet another game on this list that launched with some issues, but very early on I was pretty adamant that this was a great game, and over time this proved to be correct. Rainbow Six Siege has turned out to be one of the most successful competitive shooters for its unique tactical team based gameplay. Each operator has their own abilities, and you do need to work as a team to get the best results. 
Really though, there is just no other game like Rainbow Six Siege in how you play. There is this stealth-based component to it, and because there is environmental destruction, your enemy can show up from anywhere, whether that be through the wall, floor, or ceiling. For that matter, Rainbow Six Siege is one of the best competitive multiplayer games out right now. Resident Evil 2 is the perfect example of what a remake should be. They took a timeless classic with Resident Evil 2 and completely remade this game from the ground up with new gameplay elements and assets, and it is phenomenal. It's got a compelling story, good shooting mechanics, and an ominous vibe that has you cautiously approaching every corner. Now, I will also recommend Resident Evil 7 and 3, which I think are also great. If I could explain Nier Automata with just one word, it would be masterpiece. This game does everything just so well. It's a great single player experience with interesting characters and a very memorable story. With that said, you do need to reach the credits at least three times to get the full experience. Then there is the music, which I still listen to on occasion. The action based combat is a lot of fun with other gameplay styles thrown in, and it's also very atmospheric. If for whatever reason you have not played this game yourself, do yourself a favor and go check it out. You'll definitely be in for a wild ride. Forza Horizon 4 is probably the most fun I've had in a racing game for years. It places you in a shared world with other real life players and lets you drive across the beautiful Britain. That's the thing that's so unique with Forza Horizon 4 though. They actually change the seasons periodically, which completely changes how you drive. In the winter season, of course, the road is slippery, and rivers that were previously flowing are now frozen over, and you can actually drive on them. This is a brilliant touch on the racing genre, and it keeps it from getting stale. Forza Horizon 4 very well may be the best racing game of all time. When Overwatch released, it kind of changed the landscape for competitive multiplayer shooters. It basically mixed MOBA-style games with a first-person shooter, where you can choose from several different heroes with their own unique abilities. And I have to say, Blizzard really showed off their creativity with this one and all of the unique characters. Not only are their designs incredible with an almost Pixar look to them, but they're also insanely fun to play as. Now with that said, this is a very team-based game. Don't go in with the mindset that you don't have to work as a team. And sadly, this does create problems in the community but if you're a good team player, then Overwatch is among the best competitive shooters on the market. Looking back on this generation, Ori really stands out to me. This is an Xbox Game Studios game developed by Moon Studios. It's a true AAA Metroidvania with an emphasis on platforming, and I think the platforming is so good, it can stand toe to toe with premier 2D platformers such as Mario. The boss escape sequences especially stand out with their tight platforming and brutal difficulty. It also has an emotional story, a stunning world, and fun combat. Ori is the full package, and I would recommend both games. From Software pretty much created their own genre of games, Soulsborne. But instead of resting on their laurels, they instead made a new IP, Sekiro. While it does share similarities with Dark Souls, especially with the difficulty and brilliantly made bosses, the combat is drastically different. It revolves around a parry-based system where as you parry your enemy, they lose stamina until they eventually stagger. This creates tense combat situations, especially with more difficult enemies. Before you go into this game though, just know the difficulty in this game is insane. There are very few games that releases with as much content as Gears 5. Most of the time anymore, developers either focus on just multiplayer or just single player. With Gears 5 though, right out of the gate, it released with a great single player campaign that has cooperative gameplay. It also has a great competitive multiplayer game mode that feels like nothing else on the market thanks to its unique gameplay mechanics. And it also has a horde mode that you can lose hours to as well. Gears 5 is definitely the complete package, but what's so impressive is how good each individual game mode is. That's in large part because of its shooting mechanics. To this day, I think Gears of War has the best third person shooting mechanics out of any game on the market, and I don't even think it's close. Halo has always been Xbox's flagship franchise, 
and this is why it was so exciting to see Halo The Master Chief Collection come to the Xbox One. Not only did it include a complete remake of Halo 2, but it also includes pretty much every mainline Halo game outside of Halo 5. Now that is a lot of content, and also high quality content. Halo 2 and 3 being my favorites in the franchise are still just as good today as I remembered them being over a decade ago, especially their multiplayer. Now when this collection originally released, it did have some online issues, but those have been resolved, and ultimately this is one of the best deals in video games right now, and a great way of experiencing some of the best games ever made. From Software doesn't just have one game on this list, but two with Dark Souls. As I previously mentioned, Dark Souls pretty much created its own genre. There are a ton of Dark Souls clones out there, but to this day there still is not a game that does it better. Dark Souls is well known for being a very hard game, and if you die, you're hit with some pretty major repercussions, losing all of your souls, which the game revolves around. This certainly makes boss encounters very intense, and I think these games are timeless as well. I could easily see RPG fans playing this game a decade from now with no issues because it really is that good. Rockstar, of course, is known for being masters of big open world games, but Red Dead Redemption 2 is insane. The attention to detail in this game is crazy. Each and every animation in this game is so thought out and masterfully done. And that's the thing, there is so much to do in Red Dead Redemption 2. You can hunt, fish, or just explore the beautiful world that it has. Then there is the story, which is phenomenal, and I think that is what really surprised me. This is a big open world game without any of the sacrifices that you usually see from games similar to this. And the number one spot goes to none other than The Witcher 3. CD Projekt Red did an exceptional job with The Witcher. The story, the characters, and the world are intertwined with absolute genius. It's probably one of the most memorable games I've ever played, and that's part thanks to the choices you make actually impact the world with real consequences. Sometimes it's about choosing the lesser of two evils rather than a clear-cut correct choice, but that's one of the things that I loved about this game so much. It also has a unique combat system, the side quests are great which I don't usually like in games, and then there is the expansions which are better than some full games. The Witcher 3 is not just one of the best games on the Xbox One, but it's also one of the best games of all time. Anyways though, that's it for this video, but if I missed any of your favorite games, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video though, don't forget to hit the bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you would like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.